Hey everybody, today I want to show you some quick, easy electrical troubleshooting tips. So here's our video on quick electrical troubleshooting on 108, 109, and 111 chassis cars. So this particular car has a problem with its 12 volt power supply, which Mercedes referred to as a cigar lighter. But since nobody uses it for that anymore, it has become a 12 volt power supply. And this is particularly annoying because when you're trying to charge a phone, you can't do that. So I'm going to fix the issue on this car, explain what happened, and show you how to check your fuse panel using a butane pin, some lead so lead silver solder and a wiring connector to show you how to execute a quick easy wiring repair so this 280se 3.5 is a 1971 model and um our fuse panel here which is located in the bottom under the dash uh is readily accessible from the interior of the car. Now, before you pull this off, you should always disconnect your battery. Now, this is our 12 volt power supply right here. And when I went to charge my phone while test driving this car, I was unable to get power to it. And when I did some investigation, I found out that somebody had unplugged or actually disconnected the lead at the car's fuse pan. Disconnected this lead, the green, yellow, and black lead, going to the 12 volt power supply at the fuse at the fuse panel. Now, how did I know that this was the wire I was looking for? Well, I used the 108, 109, 111, and 113 service manual and I identified the wire in the wiring diagram. However, what I also did to make sure I had the right wire was I used my ohm meter and I went from the plug at the 12 volt power supply and touched it to the wire. I used my ohm meter and touched it to the wire. And sure enough, I had continuity, but there was a problem. The continuity wasn't in the center pin of the 12 volt power supply. It was in the periphery, the outside, which is the ground. What happened? Did this plug short out or did somebody make a mistake? Usually when I'm diagnosing 12 volt power supply issues on these early cars, it's almost always somebody's mistake. And sure enough, in the two pin connector, which I have a part here that has a similar connector on it, with these two pin connectors, there's always one fixed power supply and one fixed ground supply and you can't mix them up. And in this case, somebody had opened up the plug and switched the power in the ground position because they didn't know what they were doing. Why this was done or how long ago it was done, I have no idea. But this is basically the, uh, this is the result of, of a stupid mistake. And we see this all the time because there are a number of two pin connectors back there for the glove box light, um, for, the, for the illumination, for the climate controls if you have a 109 or 108 series car. So this is always kind of an issue and uh, you should always be on the lookout for it. So here's how we're gonna start. First of all, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my, my, um, my wire here and isolate it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna slide it onto this bare drum connector right here. Then I'm gonna get my solder. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm using a butane pin, which is a simple soldering device. And what this is saving me from doing is having to run a clunky electric cord. It saves me some time waiting for the solder to heat up. What I'm doing is I'm heating up the wire and the terminal now so that I can, so that I can start um, initiating this repair. And the trick with a repair like this is to get everything really hot, the wire hot and the terminal hot and the solder hot so that you don't have um, a situation where the, the, the pieces don't actually stick together. But at the same time, this butane pin gets really hot 
And what you want to avoid doing is cooking any plastic parts or anything around it. So the butane pin is essentially a, high, a highly contained fire that, or a highly contained little tiny torch that allows you to do very easy soldering without, um, without damaging components around the, uh, around the part. So my buddy Judah ran into an issue with his fuel fuse panel. In this case, it was his fuel pump fuse. And, um, you know, we had talked about how corrosion can occur in these fuse panels. It does happen sometimes, even though they're inside the car. So we're just gonna let that get hard for now, by the way. But this is a problem and you should be aware of it if you have one of these cars. So that's soldered, that actually soldered really nice and firm. That's what you See, want. This is firmly bonded to its wire. It's not trying to come off even when I pull on it. So I know this is a good repair. Now we're gonna go to the area where the problem originally occurred. And this is on fuse terminal two. So fuse terminal two is a little hard to get to. Just a little bit. Okay, so I guess you guys probably figured out that what happened was this wire ended up getting disconnected from the wiring harness because the person who made the mistake couldn't figure out their mistake. So they just cut the wiring lead, which is a really common course of action for people that don't know and do sloppy work. This is the kind of stuff you'd find with somebody who might say slam, slam their W108 series car and then expect somebody, you know, like one of my very intelligent subscribers who eventually acquires the car when it doesn't run anymore and other things to have to deal with. And um, what we're gonna find is that as time goes on, most of us have to deal with these problems more and more, whether they're corrosion issues or issues with the car's um, electrical system that resulted from somebody's error. You know, these are just the facts of life and dealing with one of these cars. So leaving the fuse terminal just like this and not touching it against anything. I'm gonna go to the ignition and turn on the ignition. First, I gotta hook up the battery. Okay, quick, easy arc. And now we're going to turn on the key fuse didn't blow, which is really good. That's actually a really good thing. And now we're going to try this. Oh, what do we have? Power, like we're supposed to. Great. So that's the, uh, that's the trick. Now you can use this method with the butane pin, which you can get at your local Napa store or you know any soldering device to fix your uh, to fix a, a a broken wiring lead and it's always better to solder the ter the ring terminal than to try to to try to crunch it on because when you use a crimper to to squeeze it on you can still have some looseness or connectivity and problems the soldering method ensures that you have a total 100 percent complete bond from the wire to the ring terminal and that's why it's such a great method. Anyway, I'm gonna get up and disconnect the battery now. And then I'm gonna put the fuse panel back in place. I remember one time I had a problem with one of these lighter plugs in a 280 SE 3.5 coupe. And I think my friend, my friend Henry Coelho is probably watching this. Henry remembers this incident. Henry had put the 
part of his lighter plug or his 12 volt power supply plug uh, in between his wooden dash fascia, which he had refinished, and the metal dashboard, which you're not supposed to do. The, 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 the ground part is actually supposed to go above the wood or else it'll push the wood out, but more so it can cause a short from power to ground, which is what happened. And so I remember Henry got upset because I cracked his wood. Well, I didn't know that the that the lighter had been that the 12 volt power supply plug had been installed under the wood instead of on top of the wood like it was supposed to be and um i'm sure henry remembers this because it was kind of a painful memory for him right henry <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know people make all sorts of stupid mistakes with these power supply plugs they're actually really durable and if you see an issue with one remember to look for someone's mistake first and and you know try to hunt down the mistakes before you start blaming the car itself anyway we're just going to screw this plug in place well anyway thank you guys for watching this simple video about electrical repairs in these cars uh if you're uh, supporting us on patreon thank you so much for helping make this channel Time, please like, share, and subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. And if you're going to do electrical repairs in your Mercedes, but it's really great to have a manual of literature. So don't don't be afraid to buy the right books. You go to school, you get the right books. You got to you want to work on one of these cars, you get the right books. So, cheers.